So, uh, I'm Jaime. I created this crowdfunding platform for, to launch open source challenges. But uh, before I tell you more about that, we're here to talk about how create, to create uh, these uh, open source businesses. Uh, and I want to start with, uh, whoops, with, with uh, this metaphor that says um, that peop there are two ways of uh, climbing to success, competitively or creatively. And uh, this is, you, have a you create a ladder, it helps you climb to success, and once you're there, you take away the ladder. But uh, with open source, you create the ladder, and you invite others to climb together with you and reach also their own success. So this is why I think it's important to, to foster new open source ways of doing business. Um, yeah. But the question remains, uh, if anyone can copy me and get in competition with me, how can I still make a, a business for, well, for myself? So there, well, I've been studying it uh, large and wide. And I've been looking how does uh, the people who are doing it successfully, in the, uh, like Arduino and other people, uh, do it. So these are the three keys. So you have to be the first to do something, then you have to form a community, and then you have to deliver quality and service. Otherwise, nobody will, will buy. So I'm going to develop on a bit on this. So be the first to do something doesn't mean just being the first. You have you can either do it because you do it transparently, so other people can chime in and build and bring their bricks to your building, and for or you can do something ten times better, like ten times cheaper, ten times faster, or ten times easier to use. So, for example, a forest. It's a it's an Indian company who is uh, creating a, a methodology to create a um, forest in ten, 10 years instead of in hundred years. So you can see this is only 10 mon 20 months, so they already have a pretty nice garden with a methodology and they share it in open source. Uh, then there is open source ecology, you might have heard about them. Uh, with uh, their kits you can build a tractor in one day and the cycles of development are much faster. And then the, with open desk you get the, easy, the, the easier way of creating a furniture. Uh, it's uh, fully custom uh, customizable. And it's uh, easy to build because there are no screws and no glues. So this is how they're meaning, making meaningful innovation and the they adoption. But this is not enough because even if you're the first, if someone else uh, comes and steals your innovation and they have money or a team, they can grow faster than you. So the idea is you need to form a community of contributors, people who can build on top of what you're doing. Um, and it doesn't have to be a, a very big community. Uh, just a few contributors can have a multiplier effect. Um, so the benefit for, for the company who's doing this is that uh, it brings more innovation and uh, free publicity. For example, Arduino, thanks to Arduino, many people are creating their own projects. Uh, for example, Adrian Boyer, the founder of RepRap, built the, his first open source uh, 3D printer thanks to Arduino. And this is, well, of course, he published it. Everybody knows how to do it. And they, they go to the, to the Arduino motherboard, micro microcontroller. And then there is also this kid who is creating a, a prosthetic uh, that can be brain controlled for $250 with his uh, Arduino and some uh, 3D printed uh, parts, when the, the market alternative costs $80,000. So uh, when, when you, when your community is doing stuff like that, people talk about it, like the press, like uh, the community wants to do the same, they, they have this huge library of innovation they can reach, and they can build on top of it much faster. Um, and the, the community, what she gains is uh, that she gives a brick and she gets back a house. So this is win-win for everyone. But this is still not enough, because if you're selling a crappy product, nobody's gonna buy. So you still have to, to deliver great quality and uh, a great service. So these companies, Arduino, OpenRove, Adafruit, and SparkFun, they're doing this very well. They, they have very good engineer engineering, and, uh, because, and they're more expensive. But this is not a problem, because like, they get copied by, by Chinese people. But it's, it's okay. this is actually good for them, because they make, uh, they, they make the market broader, because they, otherwise they wouldn't reach uh, so far. And the ones they've experienced a crappy product, uh, but they know the, the value of the thing, they, they go and buy back to the, to the guys who are actually making the good stuff. 
So Arduino has been copied widely, but they're still growing exponentially. Um, and this is all because of reputation. Like uh, when you've been the first, like Lego, for example, if you go to a shop and you see uh, these two boxes, uh, which one would you buy? I think. Well, my guess is would uh, you would go for the Lego one. Uh, these are both the same products, but uh, they have the same colors and they do exactly the same, I would uh, imagine. But I think you would go still go for Lego because you know they, you like what they've done and uh, you don't want to go for the, for the fishy thing because you're, you're not sure what's going uh, to go inside. So that's why people would trust open source uh, companies, even if they can be copied. And then the, the service part, it's all about creating a, a tight community around, uh, around what you're doing and about around what your community is doing. So it's very important, like all these companies are, are creating uh, forums, are animating them, so people can chime in with their innovation, with their projects, with their problems, or with the patches to what you're doing. Then, the, of course, then tutorials, so because these are pretty technical stuff, so the, the smoother the learning curve is, the easier it is uh, to adopt your innovation. And then, of course, uh, one of the most important parts, if you want to, uh, your, communi if your community to adopt and build on top of what you're doing, is documenting. And this is something that's very hard in the open source community because it's, it's a lot of work. But then it, it pays off because exactly people can build faster and, uh, and will go there because uh, you're doing it easier for them. So this is still uh, a big problem because, uh, well, the, now you know how it works. But the problem is how do you get there first? Like, how do you make something 10 times better? Uh, there are people who can do it, but there are people who want to do it but don't know how to do it, or they don't have the money to do it, or they don't have the team to do it. So. What we are offering, what we, our project uh, of crowdfunding for open source challenges is uh, to identify a problem, like you, you can create a challenge, you publish it, and uh, if your community likes it, you can crowdfund a price uh, around this uh, problem, and then you ask uh, the world to, to find a solution or to, to create one collaboratively. And if there is a solution shared in open source, uh, the creators get the price. And if there is no solution that's uh, created at, no, at some point, uh, everybody gets back their money. So hopefully like this we can accelerate open and positive innovation. Um, so to to wrap up, uh, I just would like to, to invite you to think of building ladders. First build the, the ladder for yourself, take yourself to success, and then allow others to, to make their ladder, to customize it and uh, make it better for themselves. So that's it. I hope you learned something. And if you want to talk about it uh, later, I'll be around uh, the fest. So, well, thank you.